Hello everyone. So today I want to share with you guys the USML timeline for international medical graduates or international medical students. I am Arjun Chatterjee. So in this video, I will cover three main aspects, the timeline, what should be for the student, the medical student who is still in medical school and has not graduated, the person who is in the final year of medical school or interns as we call in India, and the third category of those who have already graduated maybe two years, three years back and will not be eligible for electives. So let's first quickly go over the basic uh, framework of the MBBS course. For the medical students who are not from India and are still watching this video, don't worry, I will explain which year has which subjects and thus uh, when it makes sense to uh, for you to take USML step one or step two. In the Indian system, we have the, the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, and then the final year, which is also called internship or bond. Now this year is optional in Pakistan, I know that. So for Pakistan, people, uh, the fourth year will be considered as the final year. But in India, we need to go through this, the final year internship or bond to get our medical degree or diploma. Let's quickly go over the subjects which we are taught. So in first year, we are taught anatomy, physio and biochemistry. Second year is pharma, patho and uh, microbiology. Third year, we do ophthal, otolaryngology or ENT, biostats and family medicine or uh, community medicine. And final year, we do medicine, surgery, pediatrics, obstetrics and gynecology. And uh, then comes final year. Final year is when we go through internship in India. In other countries, you might have your own electives or you might travel abroad to get an experience of medicine elsewhere. Then comes the graduation date, which when we finally graduate and we are supposed to get our medical degree then, and then we are considered a graduate. Why is this important? Because once you graduate, you are not eligible for medical elective. So once you graduate, you cannot do electives. You can only do observerships or research electives. Now, this is very important. So once you get the medical diploma in your hand, your uh, degree, certificate then you are not eligible for electives i am saying this again and again because this is very important that's why one should start early in their journey and that's the point of this video you while you're in the first year of medical school or maybe third year in mexico basically what i'm trying to say when you're doing anatomy physio biochemistry in your medical school you should get an idea like when and how to prepare and when you should target to take step one so for that let's go to the next slide so the ideal time to take USML step one is when you're already done with your basic sciences. By basic sciences, I mean anatomy, physio, biochem, pharma, patho, micro. So when you have already done these subjects in your medical school, it's very easy for you to recall these subjects and then appear for step one. So the ideal time to take step one will be when you are already covered the basic sciences. So for Indian medical students, that will be third year and final year. As soon as you're done with your basic sciences, so just after second year, like between second year and third year, maybe two or three down, uh, months down the lane, you take step one. That being said, let's move to the next point. So when you should do your electives. Now the best time to do your electives is in your final year because in your final year or in internship or if you're in Pakistan, that's the fourth year, you are supposed to do your electives because in your final year, you are only allowed to come to the United States. You cannot do it in third year or fourth year in for Indian students. So you need to be very specific about what your final year is considered. The final year is the last year before you graduate and get your degree. Try to find that out, speak to your seniors. This will vary from country to country. That's why I'm making this uh, general point. So that's the ideal time to go for electives and take USML Step 2 CS. You will be physically here. I know that Step 2 CS has been discontinued this year and they are opting for the OET, but I assume that Step 2 CS is going to continue from next year. So the ideal time to take your USML Step 2 CS is when you come for your electives and uh, you can also use your final year to study for USML Step 2 CK. Now the thing which a lot of people don't understand is that if you start early, maybe in your first year and second year, then you have a huge advantage over other people because you take your USMLE step one in your third or fourth year, then you have the USMLE step one score. Now, if you come for your electives during your final year, even at the end of your uh, final year and maybe you take an extension or like you work it out, you need to understand that you will have to apply for your electives a year before. So you will have to take your USMLE step one somewhere around third year or fourth year if you want to have your result at the end of fourth year and then you can apply for your electives. There are other requirements for your electives like TOEFL and several other requirements. I talked about that in another video and maybe I will do, do a follow-up video for that. Uh, say in the comment section if you want to know more. So 
the most important thing i will repeat this again if you start early you have your step one in hand by third or fourth year and you can apply for your electives a lot of good places don't allow students to apply without usml step one united states clinical experience or electives which you do in the united states will get you letters of recommendations from us doctors which is going to be of utmost value if you apply for residency here in the united states so once you graduate your opportunities are going to be limited the two things which you can do is you can do observerships or you can do for go for a research elective there are a few places which don't require usml step one as a requirement but they might ask you to give toefl or they might ask you to apply maybe a year in hand so i would uh, want you to guys to like research on this i have a separate video on electives and i will link those down below so again this is the ideal time to prepare for uh, step 2 cs and like take step 2 cs while you go for your electives and study for usml step 2 ck during your final year once you come back from your electives and like do your internship bond or like go through your final year so once you have graduated the best time to take your step 2 ck maybe take two or three months once you're done with your uh, graduation and take usml step 2 ck then you are going to be good for residency application which usually starts around uh, like june the token eras token gets uh, given in june and uh, the residency application usually closes around september 15 this year it has been delayed till october i know that a lot of people are going to be in their final year when they decide to pursue step uh, like usml journey now this is difficult because this first four years are gone and you have not taken your step one the most difficult thing for you will be to get electives or clinical experience this is where you will have to apply early you should apply to as many places as possible without step one because you will require some time to uh, study for step one and like uh, maybe six months maybe seven months and then you take step one it takes another month to like uh, for you to get your report so that eight months gone now I told you earlier in this video that you should apply for your electives maybe a year to six months in hand so the, for the students who are going to start their journey in final year, it's wise to apply to as many places as possible for electives, observerships or research experience, especially electives uh, without your step one score. Now, take your final year, prepare for step one, give it as soon as possible, take TOEFL if that's a requirement for the electives, take step two CS when you go for this electives. And uh, once you come back, maybe study a little for step two CK. Once you graduate, you take step two CK, you're done. And then you can apply for observerships or research electives. That depends on your like graduation date and residency applications. Now the third category is the people who have already graduated. So you have got your medical degree or diploma. So a graduate is someone who has got their medical degree or diploma. You cannot do electives. Now that's the major issue. So in electives, you are treated as a medical student, but in observerships, your access to medical records and the patient might be limited depending on the scenario or the hospital with in which you're working. But at the same time, like once you graduate, your options are limited, right? So you will have to look out for observerships and other opportunities. A lot of people who graduate and then decide to come to the United States will take up a research position or a research elective for a year or two and then slowly build up their contacts and maybe get observerships during this one year and like look for other opportunities to grow their CV and then apply. So for the people who have already graduated, the opportunity is fairly limited but at the same time i know a lot of successful people who had graduated and then applied and they have had successful careers so you need to look for observerships look for research positions take the usml steps you know people who have gone to have successful careers and have had done their residency uh, in like the top institutions in the united states and they did not have electives they did not take their steps while they were in medical school so if you play your cards wisely and you build up contacts and like take risk you are going to be successful with that being said i would like to end this video i know this has been requested by a lot of people i am from that medical college where we do not have a lot of seniors going the usmla route uh, like i am really grateful to some people who came forward and helped me i hope this video will reach out to a lot more people and uh, the effort which I put in making this video will help others. One video which I am going to do soon is about the expenses of USMLE. So give us a quick follow at Curious Cranium. It's one of the Facebook pages which I run with one of my juniors where we post interesting clinical cases and vignettes. So in case you want to get in touch with me, you can always tweet me chatterjee underscore md and definitely this is my YouTube channel. Feel free to check out my other YouTube videos. Thank you.